No, Julie, we shouldn't do this. We have to stay together. But Valerie... Valerie who? You were right to come to me. We can't let a relationship die no matter what, no matter who. We belong together. This is so wrong. Okay, wait a second. You think that Chad is keeping something from you? What? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm afraid to find out. <laughs> you were way off base. That's bull, man. Look, I heard you. I know your secret. What, is there some, some mystery woman? Is that it? Look, if you don't be careful, this whole facade of yours is going to come crumbling down, and you're going to lose everything. Are you trying to drive me crazy? No. But if you're really serious about my brother, you should keep your eyes open. What if Sheridan changes her mind and decides she wants Luis back? Well, that's not gonna happen, especially now. Oh, so now you're a psychic? <sighs> stop. I read Aunt Sheridan the riot act. You should have heard me, I was terrific. I said she had to stop playing games to let Luis move on for his own good. Oh, so she told you, yeah, Fancy, you're absolutely right. I'll keep Chris, you take Luis. Well, not exactly, but I made my point. She understands. Well, what I know is that all of you cranes understand things differently from the rest of us mere mortals. So what if your big speech had the opposite effect on Sheridan? What if you just made her realize she can't let Luis go? Sheridan, I knew it. I knew that you would come back to me. We are meant to be together. You can't just turn our love on and off like a tap. I was just telling my mother and Paloma the same thing. They were telling me, oh, Luis, you need to move on. Luis. I'm telling you, we can turn back time. Sheridan, this is great. <laughs> we can be together the way we were always meant to be. It's a lovely thought. Yeah, it is. Sheridan, we're going to put all the pain, all the pain and the suffering behind us. We're gonna be together the way we were always meant to be. We're gonna finally find the happiness that we deserve. This isn't like you. You know, you usually face the truth head on. Just ask Chad what's going on. No, no, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. You won't. You know what? Just, just forget I said anything, okay? If you cannot talk to me, who else is there? Okay, it's just that he's always, always been so open with me. Until recently. Okay. Just calm on it, you know? Straighten things out. Secrets can ruin a relationship, Whitney. If I wasn't so worried right now, I'd be laughing. I, I cannot believe that you're trying to tell me that. Speaking from experience? I don't, I don't know what kind of secret you could be keeping. I think it has something to do with work. Because, I, I mean, I, I know all the projects that he's supervising right now, and, you know, I don't want him to, you know, tell the world about them, but there's nothing specifically confidential. It's just kind of normal business stuff. I don't know. I, I don't know what to think. You know what? Just forget it. Forget it. Forget, it. forget, it. forget it. I even said anything. I mean, you have enough to worry about with Ethan and Jared. Just forget hey, it. Hey, 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 hey. No, no, no. I've always got time for you, okay? You're like my best friend, right? Like a sister? And you know what? My problems with Ethan and Jared, they're over. Since when are they over? Since I decided to do the right thing and put Ethan behind me. Jared's the guy for me, Whitney. I'm actually gonna listen to the advice that everyone in Harmony is telling me, you know? I'm not gonna pine after Ethan anymore. It's just stupid of me to waste my time trying to get involved with a guy who isn't even free to be with me in the first place. What was that? What, a warning? You bet it was. But don't judge me. I'm not. Don't get your feathers all ruffled up, buddy boy. 
Look, I I've known you for a little while now, and I think I know what's going on inside you. This thing's tearing you apart. Yeah, well, what can I do? Well, I can't tell you that. Well, first and foremost, whatever happens, I can't lose Whitney. I mean, she's my life. Whitney and Miles, you know, I almost lost them once. I'm not going to risk losing them again. Well, then don't. And you won't if you show her how much you love her. You know, I, I should have just told Whitney the truth from day one. Oh, would she have really understood? No. Well, then you gotta choose. You're gonna have to either keep your mouth shut and learn how to live with this secret of yours, or tell Whitney, and you can watch your relationship be destroyed. Lopez Fitzgerald. I thought you were on my side. I thought you wanted me to get together with Luis. I do, but I'm telling you the truth. I like the truth. Even though it's a rare commodity in this town, I like it. So if you want to be my friend, you have to get used to it. What do you mean? I don't know about you. Well, actually, I do. We're both stubborn. If someone barges into my life and gives me a lecture on what not to do, my first reaction is go right out and do it. That sounds familiar. Uh-huh. And you just went and told off Sheridan. In spades. So, if she's as stubborn as we are, then maybe she'll go running straight into Luis's arms? Oh, my God, what have I done? <sighs> well... It might not be as bad as you think, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they, they were quite a couple. Oh, don't remind me. Everyone in this town just loves to tell me how Luis and Sheridan were the Tristan and Isolde of Harmony. I don't want to worry you, okay? But when I met them down in Mexico, I thought their relationship was remarkable. When they looked at each other, they sort of shown they could be in a room full of people and only have eyes for each other you know what i mean it's... yeah maybe you should keep your truth fetish to yourself i mean how am i supposed to compete with that no 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 uh-uh you're wrong sheridan's been very clear that she wants to stay with chris no matter what louise says or does even though her perfume was all over louise i don't need you to remind me of that yes she's admitted she's been torn but you should have heard me paloma I, I was very convincing. I got to her. She's going to let Luis go. I know it. She has to. Oh, my God. Sheridan, I don't think that I have been this happy since we got married in Mexico. Uh, we weren't really married. Well, I know. But we're going to be this time. Oh, this is fantastic. We're finally getting a chance. Luis, we need to talk. Oh, I know. God, we got so much to talk about, right? We, we got to plan the wedding. We got to find a house. Luis. Yeah, you know what? I, I've been thinking, too. I know you love your cottage, but what about somewhere else? You know, somewhere farther away from the mansion? You know, that place has just got so many bad memories. And you know, we could we can get a house. We could even fix it up ourselves. You know that farm we always liked? Got snapped up. Oh. Oh, it did. Oh, I really love that place. But you know what? That's all right, though. It doesn't matter, because we're going to start our new life on the right foot. We might as well get a new place. That's a marvelous idea. Yeah, it doesn't have to be new, no. You know, it can be an old house. Yeah, something with history, you know, that we can fix up and, and we can raise our kids there, all of them. Our kids? Yeah, all nine of them. Nine? How about more like three? Well, how about I meet you halfway? Six. Three boys and three girls and... Then we can, we can all, you know, tell them about Marty and how special their older brother was. Oh, Luis. Sheridan, we can do this. I'm telling you, we can do this. Our dreams are not out of reach, and they never have been. Imagine it, Sheridan. A new house. A new life. On your feet, Buster. I was monkey in the middle three times in a row. Now it's your turn. No, oh, no, no, no. Why don't you tell him that Pops has had a hard day and needs a rest, okay? You think that's going to work with our bunch of monsters? Not a chance, Oh, come on, hey, babe. Listen up. Huh? Don't they sound happy? Of course they're happy. Yeah. They were raised with love. And they're all so beautiful. Just like their mother. <laughs> Did I ever tell you 
that you make me the happiest man on earth when I wake up and see you in bed next to me every morning. <laughs> Imagine it, Louise. I can see our life together as clearly as I see you sitting next to me. Then let's do it. Sheridan, let's do it. Let's start right now. You know, all we need to do is... What are we gonna do? We'll, we'll get a house. We'll start with a new house, and then we'll fill it with love. Where's yesterday's newspaper? What? There is an ad in the real estate section for this house that looks so promising. I'm telling you, it's this old Cape Cod. It's off the road to Castleton, huge yard. And get this, walking distance to the beach. <laughs> well, it sounds lovely. Oh, I hope Mama didn't throw it out. Can you believe this? You and I are finally gonna be Mr. and Mrs. I think it would have taken us to get to this point. Me thinking that you were dead in Bermuda, you thinking that I was dead in Hawaii, you marrying Antonio, me almost marrying that crazy Beth, and then you marrying Chris. Now look, I know that it's not gonna be easy for you getting a divorce, but I promise you, I will be there with you. Where is that paper? I really wanna show it to you. It's got this giant tree in the front. It'll be so perfect for a tire swing. Oh, I really want you to see it. It can't happen, Luis. I'm married to Chris. <sighs> You're mine, Eve. You always will be. No, Julian. I do love you so. <laughs> you certainly... You certainly proved that. <laughs> do you think it would be possible if we just... pretended the last month or so just... This didn't happen, right? And you could start wearing your engagement ring again. We could even set a date for the for the wedding. Mm, baby. It would be so incredible. The two of us together, just for the rest of our lives, like I dreamed of all those years ago before father stopped us. You know, we can even we could set off on that that Mediterranean crew. Oh, yes. Just as soon as I'm sure that, that TC's well on the road to recovery. What? Oh, that hasn't changed, sweetheart. I, I'm still worried about his recovery. You must understand that. Well, actually, I, I, um, I really don't understand. There's so many doctors who could handle TC's case. No, but he needs me. Obsession with your uh, ex-husband's health has, has been what's destroying our entire relationship. I really, I, I, I don't understand you. Why do you put TC first when you're with me? Honey, it's complicated. No, no, no. It's really very simple. Do you love me or do you love TC? You. I love you, Julian. Okay, well, then forget about TC and concentrate on us. Forget about everything else. I mean, if you do love me, I mean, it's me and it's only me. If you're sincere about giving up on Ethan, you know I'm all for that. I know. I know how you feel, trust me. I think everyone in Harmony wants to, me to move on and be with Jared. Almost everybody. But he's a talented guy, you know? And he's caring. He goes out of his way to make me feel special. You deserve that. You are special. So are you. We both deserve to be with people we love, Whitney. And you love Chad. He's a keeper. You guys are lucky that you found each other. Yeah, but you know what? I don't feel lucky right now. I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm... I'm scared. I'm terrified. <sighs> Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just seeing things, but I can't get past the suspicion that Chad is cheating on me. Now, how am I supposed to get past that? It's 
Teresa? Oh. She must be so exhausted after everything that's gone on today. Oh, wow. She's hot. Oh my gosh, she has a fever. Wait a minute. She didn't fall asleep. I think she passed out. Julian, don't give me ultimatums. I can still be in a loving relationship with you and still be concerned about TC's recovery. It's not an either-or situation. I... It is to me. I lay the blame for the destruction of our relationship completely on you. Oh, Julian, you're being ridiculous. No, I mean, ever since CC had his, 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 his very convenient stroke, I mean, you've, you've pushed me away, you've run to his side out of guilt. I, I tried to pull you back at great expense, and what did you do? You... You broke off our engagement. Oh, honey, you almost destroyed my practice. Now, we both know that you are hovering by TC's bedside out of some insane need to recreate your family, a family that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, don't forget, TC divorced you when he found out about your past. Our past. I mean, he turned his back on you. Like everyone else in this town, except for me, I loved you no matter what. I'm asking you, is the reverse true? I mean, you accuse me of using you as a plaything, when in truth, it is you who has used me. You've used me as a way to pull yourself out of the wreckage of your dull, middle-class life. Julian, how dare no, you? No, that's true. Admit it. You, you, you missed the thrills and the riches of a life with me, and then once you got to be the, the lady of the manor, you so enjoyed it until your, your dull, middle-class guilt to hold of you, and you develop some nostalgia for a non-existent family. And lo and behold, T.C. has his, his, his accent and his stroke, a very smart move on his part, well, and voila, the noble doctor has the perfect excuse to turn her back on this new exciting life that a Puritan core can't handle. I mean, you, you're using T.C.'s health as an excuse to push me away, how pathetic is that? I told you what I said to my Aunt Sheridan and my grandmother. What happened when you and your mom talked to Luis? Well, we told him that he has to give up any idea of a life with Sheridan, that he has to move on, and we made it very clear that it's not going to work for them. We even talk about those old stories about their past lives. I mean, if they didn't get together over all the centuries, why does he think it, it can happen now? Yeah, I brought that same thing up with Sheridan. It sounds insane, but everyone around here seems to believe it. Mm. Whatever. I'll use anything to get Luis. And neither one of them will be happy until they've moved on. Mm. Mama kept talking and talking about family and grandchildren. Say what? Yes, you know Mama. She wants more grandchildren, and she wants them now. So if it works for you and my brother, you'd better be prepared to pop a few buns out of the oven or you will feel the wrath of Pilar. Are you up for that? Uh, look at this. Hey, Luis Jr., stop teasing your sisters or I won't make my special enchiladas for your birthday. <laughs> you liar, you already made them. He doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at him, Ron. Oh, we are so lucky all our children are as beautiful as their mother. You mean that? Nah, that's just fishing for compliments, huh? <laughs> yeah. The day that I dropped Sheridan and married you, it was the best day of my life. I didn't know what love was until I met you. I think your mom would be satisfied with a dozen. Louise, stop looking for the paper. We have to talk. Oh. Am I getting carried away? Look, if you don't want a Cape Cod, we can get something else. You know, just not an apartment. I want space to raise our kids. 
It's not the house, Luis. It's Chris. Oh. I'm sorry. You were making so many plans. Luis, I have a husband at home. Yeah, right. No, I, I should slow down, of course. Of course Chris is going to come into this. He has to. You know what I have to do. Yeah, of course. <sighs> You're being so understanding. Oh, hardly. Uh, I, I mean, I know that this is going to be rough on you. For both of us. Well, it's not going to be as hard for me if things have barely gotten off the ground with Fancy. What? You're married. You know, it's going to be hard for you getting a divorce. And listen, I just want you to know that I will be there for you, okay? Every step of the way, I promise. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, my regular motel room. I want it immediately. Thanks. Look, I got to get out of here. You do what you got to do, man. I wouldn't do anything to harm your relationship with Whitney, all right? All right. Damn, I hate this. I wish I was at that motel room right now. Guys, can, can you come in here? I think Teresa passed out. What? She's burning up. Should I call 911? No, so that's maybe... a little extreme. Well, maybe I should call Pilar. Are you all right? Fine. Did I just fall asleep? Well, we think you might have lost consciousness. Mm. Maybe I'm a little sick. Can, can I get some aspirin? Well, you, you almost died in that, that steam room. Maybe there's something wrong with you. No, I'm, I'm sure it's just like a cold or a virus or something. I'm fine. Call her mother. No, 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 don't, don't, please, please. Just, can you get me some aspirin and some water and I will perk right up? You sure? Mm -hmm. I'm positive. All right, you say so. Well, she's dozing off already. Can I, can I ask you a quick question? What? In the hallway just now, I heard you and Jared talking about a motel. What exactly was that about? What are you talking about? What, what motel? That's what I want to know. I heard you, Chad. You and Jared were out there talking about a motel just now. Oh, oh, that, baby. It was silly, really. We were just uh, yakking about the benefits of working at Crane. And uh, how we uh, are lucky we never have to stay in a seedy motel again. You see, baby, um, neither one of us come from money. And now that I'm a crane and Jared's a big muckety mucky crane, when we have an expense account, we'll cover a stay at the Taj Mahal. It's a good feeling. You know, he knows how I feel, how, how weird life is, and it could just turn around overnight. Right. <laughs> hey, if you say so. Oh, shoot. Wendy, I left a, a towel with ice cubes in it for Teresa's head in the bathroom. Could you grab that for me? Oh, yeah, of course I will. Cool. Look, man, I need to get out of here. All right. I'll talk to you later. Just don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yeah, right. figured out. There's gonna be hell to pay. Well, I have to admit, he's a very special guy. It must be genetic. <laughs> I remember when I met him down in Mexico. We had a pretty rocky start. But then I got to know him, and now I love him. He's the kind of man I want. Tall, handsome, strong, good capable of loving a woman with all his heart. Um, this is your brother we're talking about here, remember? 
Or should I call you Whitney Lopez Fitzgerald? <laughs> no, 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 don't start. I said I want someone like him. And don't you dare tell him I said so. I've grown to love my whole family, but he's... He's special. He's so pure. That sounds silly, doesn't it? No, no, not at all. Gwen said something just like it. She gave me some encouragement, and it really helped when I went to give Sheridan a piece of my mind. It's all so unnecessary and unfortunate. One of Liz's fault, unlike me, is that he's, uh, he's pig-headed. Mm -hmm. You know? If he'd only let Sheridan go when she told him that, that she was going to stay married to Chris, he could have avoided all this turmoil. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should have heard him. When Mama and I were talking to him, he kept saying over and over again that he loves Sheridan, that he can let her go, that she will always be in his heart. Uh, so, you had to convince Luis to let Sheridan go? Are you kidding? He's like a dog with a bone. He doesn't want to give her up. My man, I told him, hey, Luis, she's married, okay? You have to let her go, blah, 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 but he wouldn't listen. But don't worry, I put in some good words for you. Mm -hmm. I told him that you're perfect for him and that you're ready for a relationship, but I can promise anything. I just hope he's bright enough to realize you're the right girl for him. So, not only did you have to talk Luis into letting Sheridan go, you had to talk him into considering me as a girlfriend? Are you upset? What do you think? Well, it's not like that. Like what? Like Luis doesn't want you. That's not what you just said. I heard you, Paloma. It sounds like the man I want is being forced into a relationship with me by his sister and his mother. It's ironic, isn't it? If Chris hadn't saved my life in Hawaii, he'd be spending the rest of his life with you and not me. Luis. You know, we gotta tell him. I gotta tell him we're back together, and I think the sooner the better. Uh, he's gonna be hurt, but... Luis. What? You don't understand. When I brought Chris up... Yeah? I meant to say that... I'm staying with him. I'm not ending my marriage. I came here tonight to tell you that. What we had was lovely, but it's over. There's no hope for us. You are so out of line, Julian. I have never used TC's stroke to justify anything. I am a doctor. He is a patient that I care about. If I want to use my medical skills to make sure that he recovers, I think that's my business and nobody else's. Well, see, that's the root of the problem. TC is no longer your responsibility. You are not married to him. He divorced you in one of the nastiest divorce cases this town has ever seen. And still he wouldn't let you go. Oh, I was such a gentleman. I, I just offered so many times to bow out so you could be with him. But if you chose me... And since his stroke, I've gone out of my way to make sure that that son of a bitch has had the best medical care 24 hours a day. Julian, paying for doctors and paying for nurses is not the same thing as, as having family around Family? You. He is not your family anymore. He divorced you. You have no connection. Why can't you get that through your head? And why can't you just understand simple compassion, Julian? What, do you care for no one but the great grand Julian Crane? I care for you. I want to spend my life with you. Ever since I saw you singing at the Blue Note in Boston, you have been the goddess of my dreams. I will never forgive myself for letting my father stop us. And Eve, you have no idea what it has been like living with Ivy and watching you from afar. You seem so happy, your whole family. All I had was the best scotch that money could buy. <laughs> well, maybe if you kept an eye on your own family, you, 
You could have found happiness closer to home. Do you think I don't know that? My life, all these years, has been torture. Because I thought you were perfection. I am not perfection, Julian. No, you're not. I think I know now what you really are. What do you mean by that? I think we should just stop here, Eve. I'm wasting my time. No. I'm not gonna let you get away with that, Julian. What, what does that mean, what I'm really like? I don't know, Eve. I really... Uh... I don't think you're going to like the answer to that question. Well, I can take it, Julian. And just give it your best shot. Fancy, don't fly off the handle. Fly off the handle? You just told me you and your mother were begging Louise to begin a relationship with me. Me, Fancy Crane. No, you, you don't get it. Uh, the hell I don't. We were just trying to convince him to give up his crazy talk about Sheridan. Oh, what's happened to my life? Men used to beg me for the time of day. I mean, have I really sunk that low? I am Fancy Crane. Half the men on the Forbes list of billionaires would weep if I threw a smile their way, and I'm supposed to let a cop from a two-bit town decide the course of my life? The hell with that. If Luis doesn't want me, then I don't want him either. Sharon, you don't mean that. You love me. I know that you do. But I'm married to Chris. So what? Was this some sort of a joke or something? We were just talking about a house, a home, no, a new life. No, no, no. I... You got so excited. I, I just... I got carried away in your enthusiasm. I'm sorry, Louise. I should have stopped you sooner. <laughs> Love me. I never said I didn't. But I have to do the right thing. I have a husband. And a child who already lost his mother once. You have to move on. We had a chance. But it's gone. I'm waiting, Julian. Damn you. If you really want to know what I think of you. Yes, I do. No holes barred. I used to think you were perfection, Eve. God must laugh at all of us poor sods who are fool enough to put the women we love up on pedestals, because when you're so high up there, it's very difficult to see the cracks in the surface. Julian, I, I really don't care for the strained metaphors. Just... Just spit it out. I discovered that you are not perfection. You're far from it. Now, you accuse me daily of reverting to the old Julian of being a cold, soulless man. What about the old Eve? What about you? You know, I used to think that it was the drugs that made you promiscuous, that, that when you were high, you really didn't care what I did to you. And that, of course, explains those delightfully pornographic photographs you let me take of you. That is such a lie. But you see, the drugs, the drugs really had nothing to do with it. That's why it was so easy to turn you into a tramp. Because you really are nothing but a whore. At heart, you're a whore, Eve. Oh, thanks. This should make you feel a little bit better. Okay, so how is she? Not that sick wit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have fooled us. Um, Jared, where did where did Jack go? 
I'm not too sure, actually. Um, want some ice chips to make you feel a little better? Mm, no. I'm okay. Where are you, Chad? And most importantly, who are you with? doing here I must be some kind of bastard sure don't do this please would you not do this you don't think this is killing me too too fragile to last. You have to accept that, whether you want to or not. You love me. But I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't. <laughs> I don't want you, Luis. I think Chad is having an affair. I feel so damn guilty about all this. If you loved me enough, we would still be together. Tonight, it's not too late for Kidnapped. Critics call it must-see. A thriller, one of the best. The mystery goes deeper. Somebody saw something, somebody knows something. The hunt for New York's wealthiest son is just getting started. Damn, man! Are you lying? I'm gonna come back. Del Lindo, Jeremy Sisto, Dana Delaney, and Timothy Hutton. Did you take my kid? Kidnapped tonight, 10, 9 central. Missed it? Get your two-minute replay at NBC.com. Friday Night Lights premieres Tuesday at 8, 7 central on NBC.